Looking ahead, 2025 target, you just, you just put out your new outlook for 25, we right? Did. That's one of our headlines today. Uh, 6,700 is your number. I've got UBS with a 6,400. Um, so you're going to start getting these in. Yours is, you know, probably going to end up at towards the top end of where the ranges are. Uh, that, that's how you like to do it. <laughs> I'd be disappointed otherwise. Yeah, I know. I, I would, too. <laughs> I would, too. Um, why 6,700? So, you know, where are we at now? We're at 59? Let's just call it 59. So we're going to go to 67 in 25. Lay it out. Well, I think uh, the great financial crisis spawned uh, this 25-year secular bull market that we've been talking about since then. Inside secular bulls, you can have cyclical bears and cyclical bulls. We're in year three of the new cyclical bull, which will be 2025. If you go back to the 1950, the average cyclical bull market for year three is 6%. We think we can get a little bit more. Why? Because we think earnings growth actually is understated. We think the multiple actually can come down. But more importantly, we see uh, the broadening out effect to be real. It'd be real, not only from a performance standpoint, but from a fundamental perspective. If you take a look at the other 490 stocks in the S&P 500, their earnings growth is expanding a lot faster than the top 10, number one. Number two, it's the second and fourth quintile of growth is where we're seeing the best growth. And I think from a sector perspective, we're seeing, obviously, we talk a lot about this program, and Joe loves to talk about dispersion. Dispersion is, is amazing. This is where you want to be a stock picker, not, not because of technical dispersion, but because of fundamental dispersion. Version. And I think this is where you really can can make hay in the market. Would, would, would your outlook have been different with a different political outcome to the election? Um, probably not. And, and the reason is, is that we actually think that uh, the train has left the station. Shannon talked about about this is really the markets are impacted by monetary policy. Actually, and it, what we had in 2021 was a combination of fiscal and monetary policy, which was the gas, and then that was too much gas in 2022. But if you look at monetary policy and fiscal policy, that's what really drives markets, and the, and the train has left the station with respect to monetary policy becoming more loose. Yeah, I mean, the debate centers around just how fast the train is going to sort of pick up yeah. steam down, down the tracks, right? Is that, that the crux of the debate? which, you know, obviously you have people pretty optimistic about what the new administration is going to mean for the economy, for earnings, for markets. I thought yeah. Josh put it well when he, when he, when he suggested uh, the two scorecards that a, an incoming President Trump is going to care about most, most of all, uh, the golf one and the, the stock market one. Yeah, I disagree with that, by the way. He glommed onto the stock market one because it was working. If the stock market were down, he'd blame somebody else and say, that doesn't matter. So let's be clear. We've seen him do that with everything in his vision. He cares about Hold what on. the markets do. We he know that. Well, he market. cares Come about on. My point is, is that that's not going to be his focus. Because if that were his focus, it wouldn't be, let's cut taxes everywhere. But we, we don't have to get into that, okay? The facts are that if rates move up measurably, and if we stop easing, that the market's not going to do so well. Because it trades off rates. It's what do you think about his goal. target? The guy next to you, 6,700. Look, it could happen. Yeah, I really do think it's impossible to tell. And, and to Shannon's point, I'm not so sure companies that were best positioned before will be best positioned now. Take a look at Booz Allen Hamilton. Stock was on a meteor right, you know, just flying, flying, flying. Look what's done over the last few days because they're going to go after government contractors. So they're not positioned. So you really got to pick and choose ones that, don't, that aren't in involved in the orbit that they have. Now, you can find some healthcare companies do that. You can find some munition companies in defense that do that. But you have to stay away from those areas to have surety in order to meet your target. 15% yeah. sound doable, right? I mean, you've had a lot of calls that say after, you know, 20 plus and 20 plus percent for the S&P that now you've got the, the prospects of lower returns. That 15% sounds pretty pretty darn good. 15% sounds is that doable? 15% sounds good. To get to 15%, I think we need that the tariffs are not going to be as extreme as expressed during the campaign season. That's one of the, the things that I have concern in. Um, I, I somewhat disagree because I do think that the opportunity 
with President Trump's election versus if Vice President Harris had been elected surrounds the regulatory environment. And I think that regulatory environment feeds directly into your thesis that the market broadens out. I don't disagree it with that. Out. I don't disagree with that. However, I, I don't like giving politicians any credit, number one. Number two, on the regulatory front and on the sector front, I think we can get to 6,700 with different sectors and different places relative to where we are now. Our sector stuff in our positioning does reflect with respect to uh, President Trump winning. However, um, I still think the overall market would have been positive with respect to what's happening just in terms of I think we would have had different parts of it with with uh, Harris victory. Well, I mean, your, your, your strategy is to own the winners like tech, right, for growth and be contrarian financials for, for value. I don't, I don't um, even know if that's contrarian anymore. No, it's, I, well, it's not I mean, contrarian. you know, listen, so, <laughs> so we said at the, we said, you know, we, we used David Byrne from the Talking Heads, same as it ever was. If it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And guess what? Technology's working. Uh, our theme for technology has been uh, own the big, big stuff for con those that are your new consumer staples, move down into the second layer of tech for winners. Financials, we believe, based on our conversations with institutional investors around the world, are still barely market weight. They need to get more. They have not distributed in terms of where they are. They're very concentrated in a few names. They've been slow to get into the regional banks, and they certainly are not into the small small little banks. So I think there's a, there's a really great theme there. Also on consumer discretionary, our work shows you absolutely positively have to have a barbell here. So on one side, you got Amazon and Tesla, but on the other side, you got an amazing amount of companies in consumer discretionary that are showing recovering earnings and very attractive valuations. That's where you want to be in consumer discretionary. Look, 6,700 required the AI trade stay intact. I, well, yes, but at the end of the, but but AI is beginning to distribute across all sectors, and we know that it hasn't. It's not just about Nvidia; it's about all these other names. Like Oracle could be one of the biggest names. A that lot people of those are names are struggling right now. It seems as though Nvidia. Right that, now, but that's listen, a moment in time. But listen, I'm, I'm an investor. I don't really care about today. I care about the end of uh, end of next year, and I think stocks will be significantly higher. You, you than see, care. much more important than what happens with M and A, if it's a lean con legacy continuing or not, is the facts are regulations will be coming off, and if regulations come off, those costs, and some of those are the biggest costs next to technology in any company. If you remove all those regulations that make no sense, then you should see the economy benefit from that. And as far as tech, tech to me is just a perennial winner, as it always has been, and as it will be. And even if you break these companies up. It's not a matter of the up, winner. It's the degree at which you think it might outperform. I think it'll outperform. I, I think it's, a, it's just a permanent compounder that's continually outperformed. And even if they break them up, which yeah. I don't see happening, the, the sum of the parts is just greater than, than, you know, than the whole. In other words, you go to part, break it out, you'll see the valuation on those companies just take over this valuation. Let's simplify the math. If 30% of the market's going to outperform, the market's going to be up.